This is more of a vent post than a story. I have an unusual condition where I randomly age to any number. Some days I might be an old man and other days I might be a baby. My parents did their best to give me the best life they could offer. I couldn't go to school all of the time because I would wake up completely old at a height of six foot two while the night before I was just a crying baby. There are times I would wake up at the right healthy ages, from 15 to 45, and that's just my opinion. My dad would promise me to take me somewhere fun as I was a child, then the next day I would age up to an old man again and all I wanted to do was watch the news. I wish I could just age in order like everyone else. I don't care if it was young to old or old to young because random aging is just terrible. At the moment you could be at the prime age of being in your 20s while the next day you could end up as a crying baby again. People found me as a crying baby on the street and also as an old homeless man on the bench who is nearing to death. I just want to be normal. Many different types of people like me at different ages. Mothers or women who want to become pregnant like me as a baby, while old folk like me when I am old, and the present generation like me in the prime ages of being in my 20s, 30s and 40s. I was once kidnapped as a baby, and then the kidnapper let me go a day later as I ended up aging to a man in my thirties. A day later I found myself in an old people's home as I had randomly aged to an old man in my nineties. Then a day later I walked out of the old people's home as a rebellious teenager. I just want to age normally, in order where I could plan things. It's impossible to plan anything in my condition, as in one moment I could be an old man, and the next day I could go back to being a baby. There is nothing out there. If this is depressing, then I am sorry. I was 14 at the time. It was an ordinary day. It was a boring Sunday. I had no schoolwork to do or anything. Man, was I bored. So, I decided to go on Instagram for some entertainment. I was scrolling through some pictures and videos. Then all of a sudden, I get a DM. Hmm, I say. Maybe it's someone I know. I go to the DM to check it out. And it's from an older man who I have never seen before. He must have been in his 50s at least. He said that he was looking for a sugar baby. I just responded and told him to leave me alone and that I wasn't interested. When I think about it, I probably should have just blocked him. But then I told him that he was a creep and that I was only 14 years old. Thinking that was the end of it, he responds back to me saying that age is just a number and that he wants to come see me. I told him no, ill, and for him to leave me alone, and I regret it to this day for saying this, but I told him, ha, you don't even know where I live. Then he responds to me with my address and said he is coming to me now. I'm not gonna lie, that scared me a lot, because that was actually my real address. I was a little freaked out, but... I try ignoring it and just continuing my day like nothing happened. The next day came and I left for school in the morning. I walked to school. It's about a 15 minute walk. Both my parents couldn't pick me up because they both work in the early morning. As I'm walking to school, I see a car behind me. It felt a little weird as if it was following me. So I ran down a random street to see if the car was actually still following me. And to my surprise, it was. As I was running down the street, I was out of breath and slowed down. The car pulled up to me and it was the same man I saw on Instagram. I was in shock and I didn't know what to do but froze. The man said, come in the car kid, I have some candy for you. I said no thanks and he'll leave me alone. I started walking away. He didn't like that so he followed me from inside the car then pulled up in front of me. 
got out of the car, then grabbed me. I was fighting, but he was too strong. He was pulling me to his car, then another car beeps the horn and says, I'm calling the police. The man then lets go of me, goes back to his car, and drives away. The person from the other car called my parents, and I took the rest of the day off of school to calm down and relax. Missing school that day was the last thing on my mind. It's now four years later, and I haven't ever seen the man. I always thought about what would have happened to me if it wasn't for the other car that day. Would I still be alive? I never walked to school since. All I know is I'm lucky to still be alive, and I take every day as it's my last because you never know what could happen. Me and my husband were driving one night, I remember it well, as it was snowing heavily. We were driving through the snow, and it seemed to be getting heavier and heavier. I remember my husband saying, hey sweetie, this snow is getting heavier and heavier. With that suddenly there was a screech, and the car skidded on black ice. The car toppled over, but luckily we both survived. We didn't even have to be hospitalized. A week later I was looking through getaway breaks, and I thought it a good idea to me and my husband leave our town for a week and go to stay in a cabin in the woods out in Utah. We drove there in a new car that my husband bought, because he needed a car to drive to work two miles from where we live. We were driving out to the woods for what seemed like days, but in reality was only hours. When we got there, we were in awe of how beautiful the cabin looked with the trees surrounding it. It was just a beautiful sight. My husband stopped the car and turned off the engine. When we got out, he said, Did you hear that? I said, No. What is it? He smiled and he said, absolutely beautiful silence. That night we had decided to go for a walk in the woods. My husband heard it first. There were footsteps behind us, but when we turned around, there was nothing. We walked on, then suddenly I heard it this time. When we turned around, there was a person dressed in black, wearing a hoodie. I screamed, and my husband said, what the hell are you following us for? There was a man's voice. Let's play a game called The Hunt. It's kind of like a game of hide and seek on steroids, or maybe hide and seek on acid. I will give you a head start of 10 seconds to get the hell out of here, and after that I'm coming after ye with my gun, and I'm going to shoot ye both dead. We didn't bother ask any questions, and just ran and ran as fast as we could. As we were running down the road, I was counting down the seconds, and exactly when I reached ten, I heard running behind us. Suddenly there was a shot, and I fell to the ground in pain. Then the man shouted, This is no fun. Ye can at least make it a little hard for me. I'll tell ye what, I will give the bitch sixty seconds to recover and to get the hell out of here, and after that I'm coming to hunt ye down and shoot ye dead. My husband shouted at him, Get away, you crazy bastard! The man shouted back, Is it a wise idea to re- really waste time like that. I eventually got up and put my arm around my husband, and after a minute we were just down the road a little bit, when my husband screamed as a bullet hit him right in the back of his leg. He buckled down in the ground in pain. The bullet had hit the back of his kneecap. I was screaming as the man walked right up to my husband. Then the man put the gun right to my head.
head and said to my husband, Would you like me to kill your wife? Blood was pouring from my shoulder where I was shot. The man said to me, You have something to tell your husband, don't you? Something about the crash. I said to my husband, I was pregnant. Then the man said, Okay, tell him the real story. Then I turned to my husband and said, Those bullets that were shot at us. Well, I got shot by a red paint bullet, and you got shot with a real bullet. That's why I didn't feel pain getting shot, even though, of course, you thought I did. But you felt the pain. But that pain you're feeling isn't half as bad as when I lost my baby in the car you crashed. The man pointed the gun at my husband and said, My baby you killed. And he shot my husband in his head. Sarah was really excited to finally get a chance to work at her dream job, which was a model. She got a letter through the mail offering her a photo shoot at a really exclusive model agency. It was really big in the modeling world because no one actually knew who the photographer was or who the models were, but they were featured in big magazines and big art exhibitions. Sarah used to like the gothic style of the models. They were like mannequins, she used to think. Sarah received an email telling her what time the photo shoot was and the directions. She got a taxi to the photo shoot and she was so excited, she said to the taxi driver, I'm really excited because I'm going to do a photo shoot for this really cool modeling photographer. His work is featured in huge magazines and very important art exhibitions. The taxi driver smiled. When Sarah got there, she was surprised when a man wearing a masquerade mask answered the door. She wondered was he the photographer and asked him, Hello sir, are you the photographer? He replied, Yes dear, I am the photographer and you will become a very good model. Just sit in the room there and I will be with you in a few minutes. I'll make you a cup of tea. I just have to get a few last minute details done, then I will take a very artistic photo shoot of you. The man gave Sarah the cup of tea and asked her to wait a few minutes while he got things ready for the photo shoot. When Sarah was in her room she saw a few photos of a girl sitting down with flowers around her and she thought it looked so beautiful. As she was waiting for the photographer she was looking around the room. There was a curtain and she wondered what was behind it. Her curiosity got the better of her so she went behind behind it. She jumped when she saw the girl in the photo was sitting still on the chair. She guessed it must have been a mannequin, but as she held her hand, she knew by how cold it was and the feel of it that it was a corpse. She jumped when the photographer was behind her. He spoke. Now, now, dear, why were you so intrusive to look behind that curtain? You have stumbled across my secret recipe to success. This is the true way of capturing true beauty. I kill my models just a few minutes before I photograph them, and they don't have a violent killings. I just poison them with a cup of tea so I can easily move their facial expression to how I want it. You see, dear, they say a photograph captures a moment, but I capture a moment entirely, that moment of that person's last moment. Yes, I might take away their cup of tea and move them around a little, but still, that pose for that photograph is their last moment. Sarah screamed. The photographer said, Now, now, dear, don't be like that. You're a very good girl to finish your cup of tea, I see. Sarah felt faint, and the man posed her in the chair. 
for her photo shoot. 